couldn't walk, I couldn't move. I was shaking, I was scared. I couldn't write, they were helping me eat. I felt, I felt horrible. Denise Lopolis has not had it easy. Life was, was, was tough. My husband was, was dying of cancer. I was taking care of him. It was absorbing a lot of my time. She lost her husband in February and almost lost her own life in March. Right around the wake and the funeral, I was sick. It felt like the flu and not realizing I was really running down. Denise buried her husband and felt physically sick throughout the ordeal. I went from the funeral, a mass, to the after function and then went right to bed. The next evening, her brother took her to the local hospital emergency room. The emergency room that night was filled with people who seemingly had the flu. Uh, but they also thought because of uh, the recent passing of her, of, of Brian, that there was uh, deep grief attached to all of it, which was exa which exacerbated her condition. And so they released me, and then I went home. That was around the time when everybody had the flu. That's what it felt like. Fever, shakes, you know, just feeling like no energy. All I want to do is sleep. I don't believe she got out of that bed, out of that sleepiness state for a good six or seven weeks. With no signs of improvement, and actually signs of decline, her brother Brian got her back to the hospital. Because Denise started saying things that were uncharacteristic of her personality. It, it was tenuous, really. I was starting to kind of say some weird stuff, because it does affect you. And they, my friends were all worried. It almost appeared like she was actively hallucinating without medication. And they did a, a bunch of tests on me. Then their feeling was that it was grief. Uh, my brother did tell me, I kept telling them, you think this is grief? No, I'm really sick. They released me uh, with a fever of 103 and a catheter bag. They tell you it's the flu, but you didn't accept that. It didn't explain the, sp the fever that, was, that would spike at different times and uh, her inability to get out of bed and, and, and do simple caretaking. That, that troubled me. So I got home, again, still sick, still, you know, not good at all. So my brother called the New Paltz Crisis Center, and they came, and they said very much, she's really sick. So that's when Denise's brother decided that it was best for Denise to come here at Health Alliance in Kingston to meet with Mark Tack, the head of the Infectious Disease Department. Uh, she was unable to answer even simple questions. Uh, she was clearly, the, the medical term is encephalopathic, confused, disoriented. Dr. Tacker was wonderful. At one point where my sister was becoming sicker, you know, I asked about uh, the different possibilities that could occur if she were to come out of that. And he, he listed all of them. And uh, the last was not the, the very comfortable one to hear, but it was that, that, was that she was gonna die. We ordered a test called a spinal tap, a lumbar puncture. The fluid is sent to our labs. Within a few minutes, uh, we had results back that clearly showed that uh, there was an infection going on within the central nervous system that needed to be treated. The test results revealed a case of viral meningitis, which could cause serious complications such as brain damage, hearing loss, or learning disabilities. I don't remember pieces of this. The, the meningitis was starting to affect into my brain, and, and then I was in a semi-coma for three weeks. So my feet were moving, my eyes were open a little bit, so that was the distinction. She had a very impressive but slow recovery. Uh, it took some time for her, but uh, I remember walking in one day, and um, it's like walking, going from a dark room to a light room. One day after about three weeks, I just woke up like as if I came out of a nap. And they weren't sure I was gonna or if I was going to wake up, I might be a vegetable. And my friend Natalie walked in the room and I was just saying, hey, how you doing? You know, she, like as if she just heard a dog talk, you know. She was crying a little. I said, what's the matter? I haven't talked to you in three weeks. Why? Just you in a coma. Get out of here. A coma, <laughs> you know. My initial feeling was, well, my, my Brian just got to heaven and he says, don't send her up too soon. I just got here. I got people to hang it with. <laughs> Once Denise came out of her coma, she was nervous that the simple things like walking and writing were not coming back to her as quickly as she would have liked. If my writing wasn't there, it was horrible. And I do research, real estate research for a living, and that's how I pay my bills. And that's when Denise came here and the miracles started to happen. She was very confused and disoriented when she first came. And 
we weren't sure what direction she was going into. She just wanted to cave in at first. She didn't want to do anything. She just wanted to, and she got scared. She was very anxious. I was just confused. Like, what just happened to me? But to her credit, and to that of the therapists at the New Paul Center, Denise started making a rebound. So this hallway uh -huh. has special meaning for you because you used to walk this hallway I did. during rehab. I did. With Not like this, but... But with a walker. She's a true miracle, a walking miracle. She made friends with so many of the staff and such a recovery that many of them didn't recognize her on this visit. Good to see you. How are you? You look good. Hello. Hey, guys. how you doing? How are you feeling? I feel great. Thank you. You look so nice. Thank you. I feel good. Yes. I feel really good. I can't express how I feel. I want to cry, but it's not a cry of, um, of sadness. It's a cry of joy. So it's amazing when you see the reaction from all the people who worked with her yes. to see her now. Yes. It's like a whole different person. It's like she was reborn into a whole new person. And amazing. they all had something to do with it. Yes. Every single person in the building touched her in some way, or she touched them. So as you talk about uh, the, this place and, and the great people and, and the friends that you've made, you also made an, another friend. I did. I did. It was, I was really happy to see him. As, um, Donna used to bring him to me in the morning and just leave him for a while and he would cuddle and it felt really good. I, 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 it just was very therapeutic. Knowing that she liked dogs, I asked her if she'd like to meet Dexter and spent five minutes and then it grew to longer to where Dexter would lay with her and spend hours. <laughs> it, it felt good to cuddle with him. It really was very, very good for me. So to see him is really a thrill. <laughs> He has a waiting list. <laughs> so, so what, what now? You've gone through it, you've miraculously recovered, you're back to just about full strength. What happens now for Denise? I really don't know. Maybe, maybe I needed a wake-up call. You know, it's just a total reset on my life and how I look at the world and how I approach things. And um, it, it's going to sound weird, but in some way I feel blessed. Because I didn't stop and smell. For years, I've been, you know, working at my business. I think most of us do. You know, we just do it. You know, work comes first. Work comes first. You know, I don't work as many nights as I used to. I used to work till like go to work, come back, work till nine o'clock. That's not a life. That's not a life. You know. So I am. I am enjoying it. I mean, somebody calls and wants to go someplace. I drop whatever I'm doing. We're going. We're going. We're just going. You know.